I was living in Widnes, which is a chemical town just outside of Liverpool, between Liverpool and Manchester. And uh, my parents moved there from Liverpool. They lived in North Liverpool and moved there at the beginning of the 70s because I think the housing was a little bit cheaper. So they bought like a brand new, you know, for a couple of grand, a, a brand new detached house. And then had my brother and then had me. I kind of went from having this sort of um, pink, nice pink sort of little box room in a low ceilinged 1970s detached house with white MFI wardrobes and my stereo on, on there and uh, on my dressing table and I started sort of going to these concerts and like um, getting tickets and then sticking them on my wall and cutting out pictures like from the enemy and, and various magazines and sticking them on the wall, sticking posters on the wall. So as you walked in, it had gone from this like little pink princess hideout to all this like, all this, like black posters on the wall. So yeah, I started, um, I suppose, getting more of my own, my own identity in there. My friend throughout school was a girl called um, Jackie Sadler-Smith. I'm still friends with her now actually, which is good. The first day of school, when we were 11, we kind of were a bit sort of Billy No mates and we both were lumbered together at the back of a class and we both sat together like this on these, at this science lab and uh, she, we started talking about music and at the time I'd, I'd, I'd been watching um, you know, U2 live at Red Rocks, my friend had the video and I was talking about U2 and she was in, in, really into OMD. <laughs> So we were, we were just like going, I really like this band and, and we were talking about music, you know, that was, that was the thing that we kind of, but we were, we were nerds, you know, we, we always said, God, we were so nerdy, we was just like so shy, painfully shy and, you know, scared, you know, quite scared of people. I mean, a lot of people would buy records, but I couldn't really afford to, you know, I think I would save my money more for going out and seeing bands rather than buying LP. So we just kind of tape in between us. I remember this guy doing me a mixtape, which I listened to a heck of a lot. It had bands like, you know, The Pastels On, Tallulah Gosh, House of Love, all this like light stuff. But then I put on like Guns N' Roses. So it's just a, a right mixture of stuff. You know, I had mixtapes off people and, you know, you design on things on the cassette cover and do all different kind of type and you know, it was a much more personal thing. And you know, when, per when a person did you a mixtape, it took ages. <laughs> I was like, you know, stopping and pausing and everything. So, you know, it's a good time. I remember my friend getting a ticket for Slayer and then she got grounded and I went in her place. And I will say, it was like, you know, it was in 1988 and it was one of, it's one of the best gigs I've ever been to, hands down, in my whole life. Because it had such an impact on me, not only my hearing, but, but also as a, a young sort of girl who's been brought up in like, you know, Catholic education. <laughs> I go and see Slayer with all these upside down crosses everywhere and thinking, oh my God, I hope my mum doesn't find out. We were getting stuff from like vintage shops in Liverpool. There was a shop called Flip and 69A. And uh, we would just get secondhand stuff from there. And in Witness as well, we'd just go to the local charity shops and pick up a jacket for like two or three quid. So for the one thing I remember getting is some Doc Martens. So we'd have my Doc Martens on. And possibly some kind of leggings and some kind of skirt, but I'd, I'd definitely have to have like some kind of blazer, blazer on. And uh, my, I always wore bright red lipstick. I had this massive load of curly permed hair, which came to about the, you know, bright blonde, red lipstick. And 
yeah, it was quite, when I, when I look at pictures now, I go, whoa, it's quite, quite a shocking look. And then when I eventually, you know, when I got more into kind of rock, rock stuff, I remember having a, a real attachment to a red check flannelette shirt, which, <laughs> which kind of went everywhere with me. So, yeah. But yeah, the Doc Martens were very important around that time. You know, the shoes and the boots. And the boots, you had to wear them in, and they gave you terrible blisters. It was quite a happy time, really, you know. I was in school choir, and I was learning to play guitar for, for my 14th birthday. I think I got, I asked for a, an electric guitar and an amp, and, and I got it for Christmas, and I just remember having lessons at school. You know, I was in with my friends in the, in the top sets for stuff, and yet I didn't feel like I was that clever. I knew that there were people who were much brighter than me, but I was, I was painfully shy, and, and I, you know that thing in class where they have to get you to read out loud and you all go, have to go around? I used to like literally dread anything like that. It's like, <gasps> you know, having to power through it. Probably meet up with my friends, maybe early on, probably have some cider in the park or somebody's house and maybe go to a local gig in Widnes, you know, go and see a band. Or we, we, I think there was a few times where I started going into Liverpool with my friends and we'd go to a club called Planet X. Now Planet X on, say, a Saturday, they used to do these all-day events where they would put like 12 or like 15 bands on, like one after the other. And the old planet, because there was, there was two, the old planet around that time, was like in this like warehouse place in kind of dodgy bit of Liverpool. And uh, you had to go up all these like steps around this, really, you know, it's kind of a dodgy club. But it was, it was such an amazing time, you know, so bands like, I think it's all like, I remember meeting like Wayne Hussey in there from the mission after a gig and he was absolutely hammered. And I'm like, can I have your autograph, Wayne? And, and uh, Gay Bikers on Acid and like Primal Scream, you know, Kind of people like that would be, would be around. So that was quite an eye opener. I remember watching The Lost Boys quite a lot <laughs> and uh, River's Edge, which was, I think, one of Keanu Reeves' first films and had Dennis Hopper in. And um, there, was another, there was like a documentary, I remember, I, I found it actually recently. It's um, an arena documentary about heavy metal. I remember that just getting watched and watched and watched all the time because they interviewed like loads of bands on it, like from Metallica Slayer, Napalm Death, Carcass and all these. And so I used to go, wow, and watch this, just watch it constantly. Also, there was always like the video nasties, which everybody was kind of drawn to. <laughs> it's like, what's this? It's like really gross kind of like, you know, everybody sat around watching some horrific horror moment you know, somebody's house with all the lights off. It's like, oh. But um, yeah, it was, yeah, that was pretty good. Going to the video shop to get your video for your, your I think we still had top loaders then as well. You know, Betamax or VHS. <laughs> I don't think so. As I say, when I was at school, I was, I was pretty shy. And also, the, the people I was attracted to were completely out of my league. I was like, I like him. I was like, some kind of jock who was like, you know, not going to look at a girl who's like into, into music, looking at the floor most of the time. So, so I just was so, so self-conscious and, you know, just... And, 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 I, and I think to myself, oh God, my, when my kids become 16 or whatever, I'm just going to tell you to them, don't be so worried and self-conscious about your, your appearance and, and yourself and, you know, just, just enjoy it because there seemed to be people who were a lot more confident, who had a lot more boyfriends and stuff, but I, I was just too shy. I was supposed to, I wanted to be a designer, I wanted to get into, you know, fashion and my, my dream was to go to Brighton and to do um, fashion design. <laughs> So that's what, that's what the educational goal was, you know, I'm going to go to Brighton. I don't know why I wanted to go to Brighton, I just had my mind, mind set on it. But I didn't, I didn't end up going there because in the end I got a record deal, which was, which was good, but you know, part of me thinks I wish I'd have done that as well. You know.